This video will introduce the law of cosines. We'll start off by reviewing angles in standard form, and then we'll go ahead and prove the law of cosines. Keep in mind you will not have to be proving the law of cosines on an exam, but going through the process does help bring together the whole semester's worth of introduction to trigonometry. Here we are back at our unit circle. Remember an angle in standard form has the initial side along the x-axis, the vertex of the angle at the origin of the xy plane, and the angle going counterclockwise. In this case we have an acute angle theta, and we have the sides of the triangle x, y, and r. r is again the radius, r is always positive. In quadrant 1, like we have it right now, x and y are both positive. We should remember that the sine, cosine, and tangent functions can be represented both as opposite over hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse, and opposite over adjacent, but also in terms of y, x, and r as well. Sine is y over r, cosine is x over r, and tangent is y over x. We can also have an angle in the other quadrants. For instance, this angle is in the second quadrant. We still define this angle as going from the initial side to the terminal side, and it can be represented by the point x, y. In this case, in this quadrant, the x is going to be negative and the y will be positive. And as a result, the sine will be positive, cosine will be negative, and tangent will be negative in this quadrant. Again, this should all be review. Remember, we can also think of that angle theta as the reference angle, that is the acute angle formed by the nearest side of the x-axis to the terminal side of the angle. The cosine of this reference angle is the same as the cosine of the larger obtuse angle that we were looking at the previous slide. Again, the positive or negative of the sine, cosine, and tangent is taken care of by the sines of the x and the y. Again, r is always positive. Well, we're talking about the law of cosines and oblique triangles. Let's look this time at an obtuse oblique triangle. Our previous proof for the law of sines, we used an acute triangle, so this time we'll use an obtuse triangle. We have C at the origin, then we have vertices B and A as shown. The sides of the triangle are going to be like before. The lowercase a is across from angle capital A, and the same with B and with C. Let's start identifying what the x, y values are for each of these points. Well, the vertex at C is simply the point 0, 0. At B, however, it looks like the y value of that point would be 0. And what would the x value be? Well, if the distance from C to B is A, I believe that point is going to be a comma zero. The x value is a, the y value is zero. This point a, however, we don't really know what it is right now, so we're going to just call it x and y. And again, the angle we're talking about, the angle c, is this obtuse angle. Anytime we're stuck, it seems like we go back to that right triangle. And here I've made another right triangle. This is why we emphasize right triangle trigonometry in the beginning of the course. And remember, I can, instead of looking at that obtuse angle, I can look at this acute reference angle and I'll get the same result for the sine, cosine, and tangent. What are the lengths of those sides of the triangle? Well, if we've called that point at a, x comma y, then the side along the x-axis would be length x, and the height would be length y. The hypotenuse is length b, that's the original side of the triangle. And let's make it a little bit clearer about the triangle I'm talking about. Now we're talking about this light blue triangle with legs x and y, and hypotenuse b. Well, if I wanted to talk about the cosine of the angle c, again that's that acute angle we're looking at, it's equal to the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse, or in this case, the value of x divided by b. I can solve for x by multiplying both sides by b, and I get the value of x equaling b times cosine of c. I'll do the same thing for looking at sine of c. This time it's opposite over hypotenuse, or y over b, and multiplying both sides by b to solve for y gives me y equals b times sine of c. Alright, why have I bothered doing all of this? Well, now, instead of that point being called x and y, we don't really know what x and y are, I want to put everything in terms of the parts of the triangle, a, b, c, or the angles a, b, and c. And you can see I've done so at that point. The value of x we've just shown is equal to b times cosine of c, and the value of y is equal to b times sine of c. Again, where am I going with this? 
Well, let's get rid of some of the clutter. In fact, let's get rid of a whole lot of clutter and look at this triangle. This triangle isn't my original angle, but we're going to be able to use the Pythagorean theorem, believe it or not, to come up with the law of cosines. So if I remember my Pythagorean theorem, the leg squared plus the other leg squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared. Well, what are my legs and what is my hypotenuse for this new triangle? Well, this leg one is equal to the distance between this point up here and the point below it. Well, to find the distance, we take the measurement at the first point and subtract it from the value of the second point. We're looking at the y-axis here. We're going along the y-axis. So my first point, the y value is b sine of c. And then my second point is, well, that's easy. The y value for that second point is just 0. So the length of that first leg is just b sine c minus 0 or b times sine of c. Our second leg isn't as straightforward. Well, I guess it is just as straightforward, but it's a little messier looking. We'll take the point on the right hand side and subtract it from the point on the left hand side. This time we're looking at the x values. I started off with the value of a and I'll subtract from that b cosine c. That should give me the distance along that leg. So leg 2 length is a minus b cosine c. What about my hypotenuse? Well if I go back to my original triangle, that is actually length c. So here is the triangle, our new triangle, with all its sides labeled. And now we'll go ahead, we'll move that off to the side so we can see our algebra a little bit better. Let's see, length of leg 1 squared would be b sine c all squared. The length of the second side is a minus b cosine c, and we'll square all that. And that equals the hypotenuse squared, which is c squared. Well, let's actually get rid of the picture altogether, and we'll just focus on the algebra here. I have b sine c all squared plus a minus b cosine c all squared, and that equals c squared. If I do some algebra, my b sine c all squared just works out to be b squared sine squared c. Now I'll have to do multiplication of a binomial for my second term, and that works out to be a squared minus ab cosine c minus ab cosine c plus b squared cosine squared c and again that all equals c squared. What I've done on this step is reorganize the terms on the left hand side. I've taken everything with a b squared as a factor on the left hand side. Let's see, I have b squared sine squared c plus b squared cosine squared c. Then I still have my a squared term. And then I've combined my two terms together to give me minus 2ab cosine c. And again, this all equals c squared. Well, why did I group together everything with b squared as a factor? Well, because I can factor out that b squared. I get b squared times the quantity sine squared c plus cosine squared c. And I'm hoping you still remember that that equals something absolutely wonderful, simply 1. So that whole mess there just becomes 1. So we end up with, finally, our law of cosines. And we have c squared, notice I've just flopped everything on either side of the equal sign. c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine c. Again, you are not going to have to be able to recreate this proof, but by going through this, this was an excellent review of angles in standard position and a little bit of algebra review and the fact that we had to remember one of our Pythagorean identities, namely that sine squared c plus cosine squared c equals 1. There's actually three different law of cosines. We have a squared, b squared, and c squared. Notice whatever we have on the left hand side, let's take this first example, a squared, that's going to equal the other two variables squared. So in this case we have b squared plus c squared. If we looked at b squared equals, well that would equal a squared plus c squared. And then we've got this negative 2 times something cosine of something. The angle is going to be the angle that corresponds with the variable on the left hand side. So if we have a squared on the left hand side of the equation, it's going to be cosine of a. And the remaining two variables are the ones that cosine of that angle get multiplied by. Namely, in this case, b and c. Again, for b, 
it, we would be looking at AC. So these are the three laws of cosines. So we've reviewed angles in standard form, we've derived the law of cosines, and the next video we'll be actually using this for a couple examples. And those are the things you will be expected to do on exams.